Hello everyone, Insane Frame here. Welcome to a video on the channel. It's been a while since I've done any XCOM 2 content, and last time we did XCOM, we did Can We Beat XCOM 2 with a single Psy Soldier? And well, if you take a drink every time I say Psy Attack or Mind Control, well, a bottle of wine or a pint of beer won't last very long. But ever since I started this challenge, I'm sure some of you have been wondering which class would perform extremely well and which would be left in the dust. So today I decided to go with the one everyone has been waiting for. And now, by by popular demand, we ask, can you be XCOM 2 with a single Ranger? Yes, everyone. It's time to finally do this challenge with a Ranger and to see what they're made of. I've got this requested so many times and I have a feeling this challenge is going to be a marathon. It's certainly going to be a masterclass in Blade Storm tactics. So our first priority is going to be taking out the Assassin, yelling their jazzy equipment, amass lots of covert ops to take out the alien rulers and then to finish the story. All a lot easier said than done of course because this is XCOM but that's the game plan we're going with and we'll see what the aliens have in store for us. I think the Ranger has arguably the best starting toolkit since swords are very good for stabbing sectoids and shotguns are very powerful when flanking enemies in XCOM 2 but the highly armored Bioshock aliens and sectopods might have a thing or two to say about that so sharpen your swords get your 12 gauge shotgun because we're going to try and beat XCOM 2 with a single Ranger and it's going to be a incredibly long video i can tell you that much but strap in ladies and gentlemen and we'll quickly go over the rules we may only use a single ranger in combat operatives are allowed to help with covert ops no cheating or modding no glues or exploits and we're going to be playing on commander level difficulty with the rules out the way let's get started on this run so we start on up on the menu screen and go ahead and select commander level difficulty. Also, I won't be playing on IMAN mode, but if I want to retry a mission, I'll have to reload from the map selection screen on the world map. This is to keep things as fair as possible since the map will change as well as the enemy's location. But we are allowed to retry missions. With all of that done, it's time for the first mission. The only mission we are allowed multiple soldiers. And as expected, it goes very well, ladies and gentlemen. A lovely claymore makes for one patrol fall flat on its face since it does five damage so a very nice pop there from our starting reaper and with the second patrol a grenade makes them weak and we just hunt them down and they all fall flat on their faces letting us take zero damage and no casualties always nice everyone returns back and we have a promotion to give and our promotion goes to rocco redhawk his code name is red so he will be our red ranger from the power rangers i guess he looks like he's come from a mosh pit we do the protocol and dismiss everyone so we are left with the one and only rocco redhawk our red Red Ranger being the only soldier whilst everyone can go to the bar. Then it's off to see the intellectual Dr. Richard Tigan and the beautiful Dr. Lily Shen and the hardened badass John Bradford, all who are amazing in their own right. Now introductions are out the way, we get some research underway and I decide to go the unusual route and go for experimental weapons as this will prove to be extremely useful, especially since we have a Ranger. We also get ourselves a resistance ring to get some covert ops up and running as soon as possible as they will be extremely important. The world map is generous and gives us an engineer right off the bat so we can start excavating the Avenger immediately. We get our first gorilla ops and I almost forget how often these creep up on us in these challenges but a common theme is the first few missions are really extraordinarily hard especially early on so we get to it. As we head towards the relay we manage to get close enough to take a shot at a sectoid. Unfortunately it doesn't do enough damage and we reduce it to half hell. However the sectoid is a potato when he makes us panic and in the panic we decide to run to cover and KO Trooper Joe. Trooper Joe will have his day one day but he is out of action today and since we forcefully took our turn the sectoid makes a side zombie since that is their number one thing to do apparently but we are the red power ranger so we slice him down and it was all for naught so two units down and next we spot an advent officer and a trooper so it's time to fall back and let them come to us. In doing so the trooper is out of position allowing us to use our sword on him and stay in full cover but all good things come to an end as the officer manages to do some damage on us. Not great, but full cover can't save you forever, unfortunately. But we do get our own back since we flank him and land a crit, so he is out of action, ladies and gentlemen. And now it's just two units left. So repeating the first engagement, we shotgun the trooper, so this sectoid picks them up. And I decide to go out with a bang as the sectoid is damaged and goes for the relay, leading this final part up to chance. And the side zombie misses us, so thankfully we manage to complete the 
mission in style like a samurai and we live to see more missions these first missions are always extremely tough but it's well worth it to begin earning them promotions red is out for a few days but he does earn a promotion so we opt for blade master since that plus two damage and 10 aim can let us easily take out most enemies at this stage of the game so it's a fantastic promotion mr x then shows up in a jazzy format and i don't know his real name i doubt anyone does he's kind enough to give us an engineer for our trouble so we immediately get excavating ready for our facility more good news as our experimental weapon research is done and we now need to get a foundry produced to get access to them it'll have to wait for now after the resistance ring is built and the reapers decide they have a mission for us so with red freshly healed we go on in and the lost are present once we deploy in it's a simple rescue mission and the scientist has found immediately so we have two units now this is fantastic since there are two operatives up for grabs when the lost are around we get everyone in position and start running towards the objective as fast as possible it doesn't take too long since the lost are helping us with overwatch shots from advent and they really aren't the smartest against lost but we make a break for it and red starts getting some kills to at least help him on his way to his next promotion so we get a couple of kills go inside a building and when we do our next turn we get the heck out of there completing the mission nice and easy with excellent results however the loss do take a toll on us since red is now tired and this is the trouble dealing with the loss and is definitely the hardest part of the solo run since until his will is improved he has a chance to be out of action for a while so we got to be careful our biochip is then researched so we get the infirmary unlocked always a solid staple in these runs but most importantly we get the sectoid autopsy completed as quickly as possible but the mind shield is absolutely a gold standard we then get the first retaliation mission and although we do have some play here i do think that if a chosen shows up here we're mincemeat so it's best to avoid taking heavy losses here and let our soldier recoup and push on forwards when we're ready our covert ops comes back and we now have an extra skirmisher which means an extra ops tip we're doing pretty good for this stage of the game the legion of doom aka the bad guys aka the chosen have a meeting and they bicker amongst each other so everything now in play our goal is now in front of us so we've got to go find the assassin so establishing contact with other regions is now essential but it's the end of the month and we managed to get ourselves infiltrate so timers won't start on missions until we are discovered this is one of the best orders in the game since it saves so much hassle so things are getting better we decide to get a cover of as every little helps especially early on and red gets us some intel and comes back in one piece with some extra dodge no less every stat point counts but he also gets a promotion exactly what we're after so we go ahead and get the ability shadow strike not too bad we get plus 25 crit chance and 25 aim when we exit out of concealment quite powerful especially this stage of the game it allows us to take on tougher enemies than we normally would do but the absolute amazing ability we get and the star of the show is shadow step so from now on we don't trigger overwatch fire or reaction fire so now we're pretty deadly for this part of the game and we also purchase a mind shield so the pesky aliens can't mind control us or panic us anymore this is absolutely gold standard when doing a solo run the best news of the run comes as we find the assassin normally this is a headache but when they have the chosen weapons for our ranger i would beg to differ and as i said at the start of the video if we can take them out then we're on for a winner but for now we need to get a lot more abilities and equipment and covert ops before that's possible so now we can start building everything to really start changing gears so things are going swimmingly however things heat up as we get a raid mission this is very high risk as the assassin could show up but since the rewards are too great i decide to go ahead this mission took a wild ride and we destroyed all the enemies no problem since the blade master perk carried us pretty hard but we come back battered and bruised but with a promotion and an extravagant amount of loot just look at this lovely stuff we are doing brilliantly and for our promotion we have acquired ability points or ap and we get two excellent abilities a personal favorite of mine run and gun so we can take an action after dashing very strong and concealment so we can go back into concealment once per emission both very strong abilities in the right circumstances also the black market is unlocked and we go to the skirmishers to get our building done very quickly when the proving grounds are done we immediately go for the axe since it's just such a good item compared to a regular sword 
The Reapers have a mission for us, so Rocco is called up to help out, and he has just recovered in the nick of time. So we go on over to get ourselves more resources, specifically Intel and Engineers. So we deploy on in, the map favors our shotgun, we see the first patrol. It's a mech and a trooper, ladies and gentlemen. The mech gets taken out very fast since he and the trooper miss us, so we counter with a shotgun to the face. The first mech, then the trooper, and Red does what no other class can do, apart from Reapers can. So we go back into concealment so we reset our circumstances it plays in our favor since we spot the stun lancer and take a shot so the main threat is gone and then the enemy go for cover so we take out the sectoid like a true warrior so all the enemy's team is cut down a peg and lastly the flame trooper isn't really a threat so we just get shot at by him but they miss and well we decide to flank and tank him to the sewage down below all in a day's work the vip is met and we start running and how the enemy can see us behind several walls i have no idea but they are too late as we run to the evac site and get to safety and this engineer in particular is probably our most important one since they will be stationed in the resistance ring to oversee operations and covert op and then we go and do a covert op to give plus four will a lot of red in this ranger and not like a red lantern and to prove it rocco has found trooper joe he was secretly the skirmisher in disguise so with that in mind i decided to let them to form a bond it might not do much at level one but level two bonds will reduce our covert op by one day so that's what we're going for we also get magnetic weapons research so we're up to tier two weapons and dr tigers comes through for us as we get improved swords as a research project so we're ready to rumble things are starting to reach a tipping point for us and red also has the axe equipped to him so we can throw an axe as a free action in battle as well as doing slightly more damage to our opponent so upon deploying in I see a sectoid and a trooper and we deal with them in the same term. For well, the next part, a viper shows up, so it's shotgun to the wall, and we score a crit again. Feels nice, so things are going extremely well. The trooper even misses, since XCOM doesn't consider the position a flank, so we can run and gun, break in line of sight, so we can buy ourselves an extra turn. When we plant the X4 charges, we can seal once more, so we can get the jump on the enemy. Apart from a stun lancer and an officer stroll into the room, so we can go on Overwatch, and it plays out perfectly as the stun lancer is taken out, so we can slide slice the officer down and when he's done we also slice the last trooper down completing the gorilla up without any issues we go to mr x and we have got lots of intel up for grabs and we counter a dark fence so we are going forwards then i decide to finally go after the warlock for that juicy plus 10 dodge in the covert off screen because reducing incoming damage is always nice so three days away since we did buy some information from the black market don't tell anyone but when we come back red is injured not ideal but we get arguably the best order we could have hoped for in the resistance ring resistance rising so we get plus two resistant contact this is absolutely perfect for us at this stage of the game swords research is done so our melee weapons now do plus one damage always nice to see it and also we start constructing the gorilla tactics school and also excavate some more since we'll need resistant comms eventually but since we've got the resistance rising we can delay it just a little bit also something unprecedented in these runs brace yourselves i actually start the skulljack when dr lily shen advises it i know this run is doing something right for a change tygon also finishes the stun lancer autopsy so we can get tier 2 melee weapons so we now have a new axe and the best part is our covert ops comes back and we get not one but two promotions so we have red and trooper joe gain a rank always good to see and we learn probably the most devastating ability for us this run blade storm so every time an enemy moves next to us or we end our turn next to them we can attempt the melee attack against that enemy it doesn't sound like much but it can proc as many times as an enemy moves into our melee range so it's a truly devastating ability that allows a lot of attack so it's going to be the new bread and butter for our ranger as for our buildings we get the gorilla tactic school online and it's also the end of the month so the chosen warlock can summon advent priest a double-edged sword right there and we also get orders to assign so we decide to get resistance rising and to limit chosen knowledge so we can expand and the chosen are slow down a little giving us that little bit of extra time to take care of them we also get a scientist from the world map helping our research times as well very jazzy indeed and we also grab an advanced laser sight to increase our crit chance always nice to have a ranger with a lot of crit we also get success on our covert ops so we can now start the last part of the chosen assassins covert ops and the black market just so happens to have information on the chosen assassin so we are on for a winner right there 
I also decided to get an advanced hair trigger as a 10% chance for an extra action is pretty good for a mere 20 intel, so why not? Since the avatar project is near in completion, I decided to do some covert ops to reduce the avatar progress with Trooper Joe, the Alfred to Red's Batman, so you know it's going to succeed. We're almost ready to take the chosen assassin, we just need a couple more things in play. Mainly red to reach a high rank and a specific item to shut down the chosen assassin, but we'll have to be patient. But we get some gorilla ops in a good location with a large number of advent troops, so this is fantastic for us. The downside is we have to hack the advent train, but it will stop the enemy getting poison rounds, so this is a must for us. We start on off by using our free action by throwing an axe, taking out the priest, allowing us to get one on the chopping block, no pun intended, but rather than fighting to overwhelming numbers, we go to full cover and go towards the objective since it's on a train and very confined where Bladestorm can truly shine. At first it's just troopers funneling in and we just give them a good old buckshot treatment to tip the balance more in our favour, but a mech does what it does best and procs our Bladestorm and then ends its turn, so we don't have to worry since we'll just proc Bladestorm again regardless. We just shotgun, albeit terribly, and sure enough on the enemy turn, the mech is made into scrap metal since our axe crashes into it. So I then melee the last enemy and Bladestorm procs a lot this mission since we close in on the enemy and it pretty much lets us double tap the enemy once on our turn, once on their turn, and when they try to run, it goes fantastically. So when we wipe out the officer, he tries to run and we end the mission with a blade storm hit. Very fitting and that is why this ability is so good. Red is out for three days, thanks to the infirmary, so nothing serious, but I decide to get Hunter's Instincts from the Gorilla's Tactics School, so we deal plus one damage while flanking an enemy. On the ship, the resistance comms finally get started, so we don't have to worry about the amount of regions we can contact. Also, Covert Ops does a wonderful job of hindering the avatar project well done operatives you have saved our bacon also we managed to establish contact in mexico and when we do we immediately deploy red in to take out the facility he quietly sneaks in and when everyone is alerted it's too late we plant the charges and get out simple easy and effective can't ask for much more professionalism and that is why rangers are fantastic also back at base our armor research has been finished so we immediately purchase the predator armor this is really where it cements our defense since we can now take two items into battle an absolute must in these runs and also red looks amazing like he's straight out of mad max so can't fault him there since red is tired i opt to let him sit out the next operation in case the aliens decide to try anything and decide it's time we go seek out the templar so we send a team to bring them into the fold and also as a side note i upgrade the axe red has been using to tier two i thought i did this and i do apologize i have been an absolute potato a supply raid is next up on our list of things to do and this is a pretty cool mission so when we're in i use the axe on a specter they're pretty awkward enemies to do with so i decide to go ahead and two tap him we get a crit for a hefty 13 damage can't say that i'm not impressed because that is a lot of damage and very very nice indeed but the loss come in and blade storm is fantastic at dealing with the loss but the warlock has other things to say about it and well he he summons spectral zombies that don't really do anything because they are cut down thanks to, you guessed it, Blazestorm, such a good ability. Get used to hearing that this run because, my word, we use it an awful lot. We keep tagging crates to get some resources from this mission and the lost aren't really a problem for us since we can just shrug them off with axes and shotguns, so not really a problem. And the officer decides he wants to show up. This is where the battle gets messy. Since we do successfully skulljack him with the lost surrounding us, however, when the Skulljack is complete, the Codex shows up and side bombs us, so our weapon is offline. Thankfully though, we can go up to him and take a huge amount of HP off him, and the best part is we stun him, so we can successfully shut down the Codex, and on the alien's turn, we proc our ability and job well done, but we still have the Warlock and I go to ambush him, but he takes cover next to the wall, so we manage to get a good hit on him and take down his HP quite rapidly. But he does the most annoying thing and uses Spectral Army. Normally this isn't a problem but since we have the lost around it is quite the headache so you use our axe on the spectral figure taking one down and we miss the second so the fight is prolonged a few turns later and we do manage it and then we close in on the warlock and he goes all out on the thralls but we say goodbye to him by giving him the 12 gauge medicine in his face 
Now we have to deal with the thralls and thankfully, shotgun and axe in hand, we clean it up bit by bit, but by the end, well, their kills went into the triple digits. So you know it's quite a long mission when that's the case. But we come back and of course, Red is promoted like the Mad Max Ranger he is. And we get probably the most broken perk for the Ranger and that's untouchable. So whenever we kill an enemy, the next attack that would hit us is an automatic miss. This perk makes us an absolute nightmare for the aliens to deal with. This even works when attacks would automatically hit you and it also works on the chosen and area of effect attack. So pretty damn good. I would even go on record and say it is one of the best perks in the game period. And to top it off, we get a mountain of loot so the mid game is taken care of. Our covert ops is a huge success and we get the two best orders from the Templars. Feedback, so psionic enemies get hurt if they try any psionic stuff on us. And probably the most useful order in a single soldier run in XCOM 2, Noble Cause. Uh, will regains 20% faster. This is absolutely amazing, as that means our downtime is that much less. And we don't have to worry since soldiers getting tired is kind of a double-edged sword anyway. But the Templar also speed up healing for our troops, as you can see, they on the mend much faster so the templar came to fight at the perfect time thank you geese your templars are welcome at xcom anytime it's also the end of the month and mr x has some nice things to say about us for a change and the assassin gets a buff but is something we can work with and as for orders we immediately assign noble cause ladies and gentlemen to let us regain will a little bit faster as it can make all the difference i also take the time to get ranger redhawk another ability implaceable which combines nicely with untouchable so if we score a kill we are given a free move action so we can get to safety or charge headlong whatever we choose a very flexible perk mr x then decides that he wants us to do a mission so all but too happy to and normally i wouldn't use the skull jack but in this case is not a bad pick so i keep it as we don't really have a secondary item that's useful but when we start the spectre at the beginning procs our hair trigger so we shoot him twice and cue the absolute badassery that is ranger rocco redhawk we charge in and shop an officer, no biggie, and of course he tries to run but to no avail thanks to our perk procking. Then when more enemies come in, including the codex, we just decide we do not like codexes and shotgun them in the face after they use a side bomb. but since we use a sword, our weapon is not affected and he gets a crit since shotguns are great at that. Then we get our free move and well, the sectoid has raised a side zombie so we move next to him and well, you guessed it, he gets a face full of chopping wood then we are shot at but untouchable just says no we're not shot at so the aliens didn't hurt us and the sectoid just doesn't understand we aren't afraid of them like in the early game another enemy shows up and he gets the same treatment an axe in the back he tries to hurt us it doesn't work so we just go ahead and put an end to him in style and complete the mission the most broken combination of perks ladies and gentlemen is beautiful and perfectly balanced as some would say and not even a drop of hp during the whole mission whilst we wreak havoc in the enemy's faces red comes on back and gets a promotion to colonel rank the final rank but not his final form so we get the absolutely amazing ability rapid fire if going around destroying things wasn't bad enough already now we can take two shots as an action so you can imagine what two crits from a shotgun can do to the enemy i think we've reached the point of being a terminator ladies and gentlemen since red has been through so much i decide to get him some therapy and put him in trait recovery in the infirmary so we can give him a clean slate and whilst that's happening we send some people on cover ops to gain intel experimental ammo also comes back and we now have talon rounds granting a whopping plus 20 percent crit chance and plus one crit damage that is amazing so with all that there's only one last thing we need to do with red he's fresh out of therapy to upgrade red shotgun with a superior laser sight and of course a superior repeater courtesy of the black market of course and that shotgun is quite the beastly sight we get gorilla ops again and we can't let the enemy get their tower to inflict will penalty Penalties. that will not do otherwise we'll start to lose this uphill battle so it's quite a fire exchange since flame troops are about and we take out the relay no problem and the fight gets us surrounded very quickly so i take to the roof and we don't have to fight everyone all in one go and we can plink away at the enemy we get a couple of kills then i move to the other side and it goes okay since we can start using our talent round for that sweet sweet critical damage oh it's just so lovely and we love damage and of course it 
just goes wild in melee so things are doing very fantastic with red ready it's time we did the covert op for the chosen assassin we get a retaliation mission so this isn't great but we have to pass on it i decided to do one more covert op to improve our soldiers intelligence as it gives plus four will and some ability points and when red comes back he has enough ability points for his last ability we'll need to defeat our first chosen shredder an extra ability but a very potent one as it allows us to shred armor with our shotgun since we have a tier 2 shotgun it will do two points of armor damage and three points at tier 3 and so on so we're all ready to deploy and we go on into the first chosen stronghold initially it's not too bad since we can run around and thanks to a doorway the aliens get lots of melee to the face so we're off to a fantastic start then more aliens show up and then more so it's just run and gun to get away and when the berserker is down the next part is using more doorways i think we're using all the doorways we can but we're chopping down two stun lancers and they just run past not realizing we're here ready to destroy them so of all said and done we make a flame trooper explode in glorious effect and the officer gets a talon round to the face from a ranger standard stuff in XCOM. really he should have known better but then we get to the ascension gate and then the chosen has their cut scene and it's up to us to destroy them so let's begin as a ranger we have a unique thing we can do here we use the assassin's own trick against them and go invisible with concealment and when we get to the sarcophagus we spot them and decide to use rapid fire for some hefty damage almost two shotting the assassin while shattering their armor the assassin in response decides to summon some troopers to assist little does the assassin know this actually helps us a lot so they do some minor damage against us and in return we use their troops by any ending them and using our perks to end our turn next to the assassin so in response the chosen tries to blind us needless to say it doesn't go well so we decide to use our axe to chop the assassin and move to the last trooper and start the first sarcophagus phase as this went very quickly indeed and is very very good we get okay damage but at least the sarcophagus is dented we use our implacable and untouchable to slowly but surely beat the enemy forces and the assassin well they can't deal damage to us as long as we don't get shot at too much and the assassin uses harbor wave which because we have mind shield doesn't actually do anything so thanks i guess assassin we decide to deal with the last codex and implacable puts us near the objective the chosen is still invisible so we go to a spot and well we found the assassin and i decide to use rapid fire to deal a whopping 38 damage you heard that right 38 damage the most damage i've done by an action i've done in xcom the most i've done in a shot is 28 damage so this is just crazy and it's a tier 2 weapon sorry about that ladies and gentlemen anyway now that we're back and i've had a cup of tea the second phase is here and we do a fairly sizable dent in the sarcophagus it's almost reeling but now we have to deal with two specters and two officers no biggie since the specters aren't really here all that much but we destroy them and the assassin shows up and we have a solid way of dealing with the assassin we let untouchable do the heavy lifting and then use rapid fire this goes on for about three rounds since we can't damage the sarcophagus too hastily but four times the charm as when the objective is destroyed we go head to head with the assassin and this time no rapid fire just a shotgun to the face allowing us to beat the chosen winning us the chosen weapons the best weaponry for red in the whole game so when we get back we get a cutscene the bad guys are not happy and red has made quite an impact on them since they look mad at each other and of course to reward red we get a superior speed personal combat stim and also get the assassin's weapons research immediately red and trooper joe also hit bond level two so now all covert ops take one less day this is ridiculously useful and we can start farming covert ops we also get back and the assassin's weapons are equipped immediately to red when they're available the sword ignores five points of armor and never misses you heard that right this weapon auto hits enemies which is absolutely broken in xcom and the arashi shotgun has increased range and four weapon mods all of which are superior quality so we have the best gear in the game for a ranger 
Now it's time to get to the Warlock and we get all of our covert operatives lined up so Red can stay in the field. They can take care of the covert ops for us. So Red decides to go to the Black Site mission so we can get the vial. This really highlights how deadly a ranger is. With the chosen weapons, we just can't miss and ignore armor and deal crazy damage. And if the enemy do fight back, we get a free hit that we can just say no to and it resets on another kill. So things are just ridiculous now since they roll out the mid game unit and we just dance around them. It's pretty damn ridiculous indeed. Perfect like a lovely warm cup of tea and I have to say I love a Yorkshire tea. Funnily enough the Warlock Spectral Minions actually make this easy for us as they have free kills allowing us to proc out perks. The enemy have a hard time but we just make them pay since Red is now a fully fledged Red Power Ranger. So all will be destroyed and the Warlock well we can't have him roaming around as a negative ranger yes that was a thing in power rangers they were the evil power rangers but that aside it doesn't matter since rapid fire shotguns the warlock in the face and it solves all our problems ladies and gentlemen so the warlock retreats and uses the dreaded spectral army and guess what it doesn't really matter as we just bulldoze through them since well an Aussie fueled by tea and a Mohawk with Mad Max power who is a former Power Ranger is a sight to behold as we just stab all of the spectral soldiers and then the warlock just runs away and because of implaceable he only gets his comeuppance so we take the vial when he's out and the heavy mech clears way out for us and we destroy the reinforcements no problem and get away simple as that and red at base has been on 15 missions and has 178 kills i just love seeing how many kills a soldier can get but the aliens are cunning and set up a raiding mission but since red is out for five days we can't do it so it's Back to establishing contact across the globe. Eventually our operatives do rank up enough so we can begin hunting the chosen warlock and we even get a much needed engineer from the world map as we need one really badly. That shadow chamber is going to build itself after all but we get gorilla off swinging by once again and there's a reward for us another engineer and we get a really nasty dark vent that means all of our covert ops have a chance to be captured and we can't have that now. So red goes in as he does and we eliminate the first patrol fairly easily just a shield bearer trooper and mech nothing serious and when we spring at them we move around so blade storm props and the mech we rapid fire but it does the deed and runs past us to get flattened once we get to the main area we are met with heavy resistance but we manage to get to the relay and deal with it in one fell swoop and we start fighting the enemy it's as simple as kill one enemy move around a corner cut in line of sight and rinse and repeat no matter how tough the enemies are we can take large amounts of their hp away as long as we run around and we destroy them without too much trouble rangers sure know how to cause chaos and it is amazing as we complete covert ops we get close to the warlock but notably we get a resistance order that lets us contact other regions instantly we'll be using this once the month is up for sure but we risk a covert up for the warlock so red and trooper joe are out for seven days during which time we explore other regions to flag up some facilities ready to get the avatar project under control whilst also also building the shadow chamber in the meantime. Our covert op now lets us have access to the chosen warlock but we have the doom counter ladies and gentlemen. If that hits zero we lose this entire campaign so thanks for our exploration of the world map it's time to take out a few facilities. So a couple of trips and we spring the charges on each facility so we can get in and out without taking any damage to our HP. Although it does make us have a huge will hit but by the end red is shaken but this can be a boon if we play our cards right we just need to give him some time the avatar project is dealt with so the run is not failed and we're all good again we finally get some good armor the predator armor is sufficient but now we have wraith armor some of my favorite armor in the game a direct upgrade from predator armor and we now have the perfect time to test it out we have gorilla ops red is shaken so we can't deploy him under normal circumstances but ladies and gentlemen these aren't normal circumstances we can't risk capture on covert ops that is what's keeping us in the game at this point so we get red up and alum he is the six million dollar man for one mission only and boy do i feel old making that reference but we get to use the wraith suit it has a grapple hook so we can cover ground quickly and even phase through walls if we so choose it's some pretty busted armor but we do give an item slot for it but at this stage of the game the utility outweighs the item slot but we will get some armor later that gets the best of both worlds so i decided to take out a and retreat and of course the warlock wants to say hello so we 
he comes in boasting like he goes to Starbucks every day and we hone in on the objective and we get what we need, albeit we do suffer damage. But for once, damage doesn't really matter since after this mission, Red will have to go back into the infirmary. But the Codex does not go unpunished since the sword swing cuts it down a peg and the lost are tying down the enemy. So things are going pretty good and the Codex destroys itself since we have feedback and it does damage to psionic enemies. So long Mr. Codex and when all is said and done the Chosen isn't the brightest as he just teleports his ally into a prime position for us. So we end the Spectre with a nice crit since we specialise in crits and the enemy can't handle it. And well we do get a few hits off on the Chosen but one of his strengths is he is immune to melee. How that works I don't know but the lost swarm and can't damage him but they make it difficult for him to move which is what I was going for but the Archon gets a huge melee hit on us doing 8 damage and well the Warlock gets a lot of shots from us and decides enough is enough and uses Spectral Army. We try and solve the problem and normally this is annoying as hell but we are Red Power Ranger. Evil does not deter us because well Blade Storm is a thing so we cut them down to sides and our friends the lost help out since they are helpful. If there's an XCOM free please give these guys a cure or something so they can help XCOM because they are so helpful in these challenges. With all the Spectral Army done we take out the Warlock since the lost have kept them pinned down and we now have the last cluster of enemies, some advent troops and that mech is actually quite scary but on our turn we take out the officer in one hit since he has some damage from the lost and the Arashi shotgun is a wonderful thing. We manage to break line of sight so the enemy is limited to one attack and the mech reveals itself. Wraith allows us to charge the mech and put it down for good and we use our perk to reposition after a kill and say hello to the trooper, allowing us to get the kill, win the mission, thanks to Bladestorm taking out the loss. That is why Red and Rangers in general are amazing. Red, however, is out for 13 days. Not great, but our covert ops can continue and we make sure to get to the Templar so Red can have premium treatment. So he's only out for 10 days, two more than when he was shaken, and also we get our first Shadow Chamber project research from the Codex Brain. Normally, I do all this after the Chosen have been defeated, but our hero has performed amazingly well, allowing time for this. The Covert Ops allows for us to have more time. The Avatar project is reduced, so thank you, Covert Ops. And we decide to go track down the Hunter, probably the easiest of the Chosen, but we get more Shadow Project completed, and the gang isn't happy with what they find. But what we do find is that we decide to take on the Chosen Warlock and give Red his final form, the Warden Armor, allowing us a point of armor at our second item slot at the expense of a grapple hook and wrath. Let us run through solid object. I think it's actually okay because Talon rounds are back into the fray and they deal a lot of crit damage for us. And when storming the stronghold, they perform well against the ruffians that would do us harm. Instead, we make sure they are face first into a wall and then it's the creepy crawly chrysalids. Although, it's not really that tough since, well, you know the drill by now, our favourite perk, the blade storm. I just hope you guys haven't been counting how many times I said blade storm this video because it's going to be a lot. But when that's done, a random Archon and an Andromedon get the same treatment. So we we use the ascension gate and it's time to face the man himself. I decide to use our conceal just like the assassin so we could guarantee a critical hit on the warlock and even use rapid fire since this perk is going to absolutely obliterate the warlock since we can deal 30 damage reliably a turn on him and easily get to the first sarcophagus phase but once the warlock is done messing around we get the unit spawn in and get hit on the sarcophagus due to a codex spawning as they jam our weapon. Jammed weapon aside we just charge in using our sword since you can't really jam a sword since it's a sword and we just take out the enemy one by one since we are a sword wielding madman and the codex is hated. So once that's all dealt with the enemies start trying to mind control it. It doesn't really work since we have the perfect counter and in solo runs the mind shield is a gold standard to prevent the game over screen in one turn. So feedback does its job on top of that as attacks is free attack. When we take out all the priests we get up in the warlock's grill and get a shot off so he has 1 HP and regenerates 3 HP but does the one thing that he shouldn't do and tries to mind control us. Warlock I just explained this. We win round 2 and now it's the second round on the sarcophagus and we get some lucky spawns 
as it's a berserker and a chrysalid. I never thought I'd say that in an XCOM video, but here we are. Bladestorm does its thing and takes them out, so we don't have to worry. But a codex comes in and we are relieved of our ammo, so we go and take one out since it's cloned itself and stay out of sight of the enemy. When the Warlock is here again, we just use rapid fire on him immediately on his turn. He uses Spectral Army in response. The problem is we are three steps ahead since when he uses this, it's very annoying, especially with health regen, but we are prepared. So when it's activated, we take out one ghost soldier and move next to the second one, which lets our melee take it out. And when that happens, we are in a good spot as the third guy comes in and we're all good. When it all plays out, we hit the warlock a few more times, allowing us to get into the another damage phase on the sarcophagus. We can finally destroy it, so the warlock respawns at half health. And well, with everything that's happened, we decide to end things rightly as we do this good old rapid fire and he goes into the ground allowing us to get the win and take out the chosen warlock all in a day's work cue the death scene now that the warlock is out the picture is just the hunter so red is out for eight days but it's worth the trouble since now the end is almost in sight it's the end of the month and mr x dares states this it is unfortunate commander that your recent efforts have proven to be so mediocre Mr. X, one soldier, has accomplished all of this and a chosen has been taken out. Like, seriously, come on, you have extremely high standards. So, with everything said, I decided to get some more abilities. First off is Reaper, so we can now do chain melee kills on our turn. Although, every attack after our first does slightly less damage. This is great to finish off injured enemies like Codexes and Troopers, so not bad. And also, we get Aim, so Hunker Down gets plus 20 Aim. Not amazing, but it'll pair well with Deep Cover when we get it. It. so we only have a few abilities left and red is still waiting to get better but we're in a winning position this run one more chosen and our shadow projects are almost complete red deploys into the facility objective and we get our first sector pod so we decide to break line of sight and it's just as i hoped since the sector pod charges through the building so we swipe at it with our sword but on our turn i just go with a gun and run to get to safety and hide from the sector pod and shred its armor with shredder using a single shot so free armor damage down. Then on its turn, it goes into Overwatch. Why? Don't know, but a rapid fire sorts this mechanical menace out with the sector pod dealt with it's now time to march on towards the facility it's not too bad a couple of skirmishes and using our mobility to outplay the enemy and it's easy pickings thanks to a hair trigger proc so we charge through the facility and we decide to grab the stasis suit once we grab it it's time to run from the facility and next turn we're out tigers then explains this is the key to undoing the aliens those who have watched my previous playthroughs already know why but it's pretty cool looking i must say we do some covert ops, but I time it wrong since we have gorilla ops sneak up on us. But thankfully, nothing nasty is here, or at least I hope not. But we get red some more will by reducing the avatar project, so very nice. Trooper Joe is now a captain, and his perks would be absolutely amazing for a solo run. His bonus perk he's got are absolutely amazing. I mean, return fire in and of itself is awesome. But he just has such good perks, we'll have to see when we get to that run. So yeah, comment down below if you want a skirmisher run we also get the next shadow project research i just want to say i love the voice actors they selected for this game bradford is by far my favorite and if you read xcom novels you can understand why john bradford has changed so much he has had a very hard 20 years then the alien gorilla ops come back and bite us so we need a lot more intel to make contact with our objectives not a great thing but a good time to set out to defeat the last of the chosen we don't want to face him in the final battle if we can at all help it but it's supply raid mission time and since we have done the shadow project it's time to get ourselves started on skulljack and a codex and this is the perfect place for it and a few codexes aren't a problem for us since we have reaper but when we skulljack the codex we meet our first avatar the end game unit for the aliens the avatar isn't really the most intelligent as it runs across and i think you all know what happens he gets shanks thanked to bladestorm courtesy of red and he teleports away when he takes damage but we use reaper on our turn to clean up the codexes as we get a free action every time we kill a codex using reaper is just fantastic and very very satisfying and very very jazzy the avatar has taken lessons from the warlock and is a donut as he tries to mind control us he hasn't learned that it's not a good idea to do so he then teleports into an excellent spot for us and cue the rapid fire moment first isn't great but the second shot puts him down so we are all good and he is out of 
for commission, ladies and gentlemen. An easy avatar kill, and as for the mission, it isn't that hard. We managed to get a really nice Reaper chain kill since the loss have been battering the enemy forces down, so we get a wonderful triple kill and cue for a mech to go down, and it sure does on its turn. Thanks to Bladestorm, I decide to just evac out since we got what we came for and we cleaned up Advent in the air so all is good. And now we're golden despite everyone saying we failed the mission but we've got our objective so we can move forward. After another cutscene it's clear we need to reach a point on the world map but we're in a solid position and pretty much in the end game. We do have gorilla ops but it's a blade storm fest since most of the enemies are melee so Red shows them his moves that we all know and love so they are all laid out sliced and diced like a chef dicing up a carrot or a piece of garlic. I think at this rate he could even be a superhero with all his gear as he is soloing a alien invasion successfully but a noteworthy unit here is the gatekeeper and the gatekeeper is not as bad as a sector pod but it's still a huge threat we see the gatekeeper we take a shot the gatekeeper responds by lighting the living room on fire how could you gatekeeper so on our turn we say how dare you and use rapid fire the gatekeeper problem is solved as it turns out 12 gauge rapid fire is amazing against them and now he paid the price for it as for the other units they come and see us but we decide red is a zorro fan since he uses a owasamono grade sword on them and he, they are all dead just go figure zorro from one piece would be proud of red anyway this video is getting extremely long so let's go and hunt the hunter we go ahead and select the chosen stronghold and then red is deployed on in when he's deployed in we fight our way through and eventually we get to the ascension gate and then we go ahead and meet the hunter cue the cutscene Come on, Hunter. You're not supposed to be here. You were never meant to figure out our little trick. Full of surprises, aren't you? Soon to be full of holes. So, Hunter Chosen time. First thing, we play very predictable. We just shank the Hunter, no sign, just kind of a little stabby there but in return he decides to summon a whole squad of troopers and well to be honest i can't blame him he throws a flashbang it doesn't do anything this is why mind shield are gold standard but as for his troopers well i decide to use reaper on one and two of them and they're stood together so i simply stand there and hunker down for extra defense this lets us take both of the troopers out no problem without even doing anything and the hunter shows up to try and hit us but untouchable is just awesome since we can just set up our next turn and eventually the last trooper is out for the count and i just break line of sight and the hunter fires missing us giving us a golden opportunity to use rapid fire to deal the hammer blow against him so the first damage phase begins and we get two shots off so not too bad and then reinforcements come in and it's the worst possible combo an archon a heavy mech a berserker and a priest so we do what we can and clear the forces and hilariously after we've cleaned them up the hunter decides to summon four advent troops right next to us my dad so they get a taste of our oh was mono sword and it hurts them a lot once again zorro would be proud so we fight back against the trooper they do scratch us mind you but we manage to repel them and the hunter thinks he's got us but we made him vulnerable in his corner so we can now rapid fire to counter planeswalker and the next damage phase begins and we score some excellent hits but more enemies spawn in and the codex gave us a golden opportunity since they side bombed us and have become our combo piece so we activate reaper wipe out one codex to get a lot of movement go wipe out the second so we're on the other side of the map i reload and conceal ourselves ready for senior bioshock alien next turn we use rapid fire to take out scuba alien and when the hunter is around we can shoot him taking chunks after his health and the andromedon gives us another point of our perk unstoppable making it so the hunter can't do anything and just when i thought things couldn't get any better we find the elite specter and give him the royal treatment and he is out for the count uh, so we continue our fight and when the hunter has had enough it's on to the third damage phase and finally hair trigger procs allowing us to finish this fight 
as the hunter is back but this time we have everything off cooldown so i flank the poor guy and do a rapid fire allowing us to take out the hunt for good but he dodges one of the bullets to survive we know what must be done as a berserker decides to barge in and say hello so hello mr berserker but this makes the hunter's death more satisfying we go ahead and cut him down as swords on a swordsman's back are his shame as a great swordsman would say but the hunter isn't strong enough to take it though that that is it. The Chosen are no longer in the campaign. They've been beaten. All that remains is our objective to go to the final mission. Red is out for three days. Not too shabby there, Red. And just look at them kills and the mission count. Crikey, Red. Save some for the rest of us, my good man. Now that the Chosen are done, we can kick back and relax. But for Red, that is not the case. We have to make him into a covert super soldier. You can see his stats here starting to get pretty serious. 70 will is certainly no joke. 18 mobility is amazing, so we go ahead and deploy to find the codex coordinates, allowing us to get into the final set of missions so we can start getting our research in the shadow chamber. But alas, we go on in with the hero that is Ranger Red. So since we're a ranger, we don't have to worry about chrysalids because blaze storm is a thing we only have to deal with one patrol but crit shots are just absolutely amazing since they deal so much damage then we get to the psionic gate and once all the chrysalids have been dealt with we get our second gatekeeper this run and well i gotta be honest it's anticlimactic as hell after Gelim Red doing a bunch of covert ops, a UFO lands next to us, so you guys can now see how ridiculous he's become. Bradford says the UFO's here and it's time to deploy our super soldier. I think even the Space Marines would be happy with him at this point. First cluster, not even a problem since we ambushed the Archon, but if you're playing a drinking game with the Blade Storm, I'm so sorry, but yeah blade storm and then the reaper combo it sorts out not only the archon but also the codexes and when it's done and dusted in the same turn we can move towards the ufo so the aliens aren't doing so good and the second cluster or the pod of aliens is met and we get the lowest damage possible on the lancer unfortunate but we do dodge so his attack isn't the worst free damage is fine so when the aliens scratch us we end up completely countering by getting a crit on the heavy mech so we don't have to worry about the other two now is there in the lethal range so we disarm the ufo and reinforcements aren't coming anymore so it's now playing hide and seek with that cluster oh you dastardly fellow but we find them and they can't do anything against us so now it's finding the sector pod roaming around the big fred so we have to dance around it but we get a couple of shots off use reaper to retreat away and since the sector pod misses it goes ahead and uses its wrath cannon so we can move out the way and rapid fire it out of existence so we pretty much win now and as the last unit falls it's made cast iron so a job well done upon arriving back at base red comes back he's done 30 missions with 400 kills gotta admit it is getting pretty ridiculous as to how much damage this guy is doing but that is what mohawk power does combined with yorkshire tea the aussies are an amazing bunch and that's for certain but we finish the silent gate research and get quite a cool scene between dr lily shen and dr to Richard Targum, but before we can go any further, sector pods and gatekeepers are going to be difficult to handle, so it's over to go get some blue screen rounds to minimize that. Since we're in close combat anyway, talent rounds will only take us so far, but blue screen rounds, yeah, they're going to help out massively. Red is still on the super soldier training program, running covert ops, getting them stats, and then it's time. We get the final autopsy. Now, with everything being geared towards the end game, we finish up our covert ops, and Mr. X gives his final message and says that we must prevail but he is caught by advent which does not bode well for us but red has finished his super soldier training and the advent tower is here so it's time to end this challenge with the final stretch so our first mission is advent tower we activate some cheeky buffs to let us get the upper hand so we are good to go as we go in well we are pretty much an XCOM 2 boss now since we have a lot of hp can move pretty much the amount most XCOM soldiers can dash as well as having the aim to back it up 90 aim might not be the maximum but it's still a heck of a lot so much so that we now have most of our shots being over 90 percent so i think it's fair to say red has become a XCOM boss and put the aliens to shame these aliens they don't know what's hit them by the time we see an actual threat two archons and a spectre well 
they're too late because we can just hack the objective and end the mission. Red, you have become a hero in the XCOM books and you can join the likes of Big Scuba and Frass Firejacket. Look at that kill tally and the amount of missions. It's just outstanding, even for these playthroughs. But we have the last mission, the toughest gauntlet. So it's time to step into the final mission of the game and see if Red has what it takes to become a legend. It feels like a thing Johnny Silverhand would say from Cyberpunk 2077, but let's see if Red can make him proud so this is our stats going in pretty damn good and beyond the elite level those are some serious numbers i must say we also have blue screen rounds for those heavy units and the mind shield as mind shields are a must since one mind control the game's over so here we are we go on in everything is going forward it's time we go to the aliens hq and give them hell with rocco redhall so for this mission we get the commander's avatar supposedly me in game but i'm still a yorkshire tea drinking british man with a supposed secret identity so nice try xcom but you can't fool everyone that easily but for the sake of the run we won't be able to use the commander's avatar in any way since the first rule is we can only use one ranger in battle so for this it's only rocco who is allowed to be used so you have to sit this one out sir avatar so red starts out and defensive since we don't have many places to run so we need to create a foothold so scuba alien gets hit and then the codex tries to complicate things but reaper allows one to be discarded and then we can go to scuba alien with a sword strike meaning he is in lethal range so a solid shotgun blast and we're sorted one of the codexes is out of position so bang bang down goes the codex then it's his buddy's turn so all is going well so far next up is the sector pod this is quite the problem however the best thing ever happens and the XCOM gods smile on us and give us a hair trigger prog allowing us to use rapid fire meaning we get three shots in the damn thing so we take it down in one turn making a huge dent in this pile of reinforcements so we are now looking fantastic so with the aliens dealt with we can steamroll forwards into some more of their forces this is a lot of mechs and normally this isn't great but blade storm and rapid fire take care of this and we only suffer one damage in total so i'll take that any day of the week and the mutons all huddle around us little do they know we are ready with reaper and destroy all the mutons and injured units then combo with swishy movements red specialty i think sundowner from metal gear rising would be very jealous so then it's more reaper and bladestorm combos on more mechs they really do love mechs for this reason in this mission but we push through to the last alien section and it's a gatekeeper so knowing how odd gatekeepers can be the vipers didn't concern me but the archons did so i decided to damage the gatekeeper and strip it of some armor and the gatekeeper decided to heal itself for whatever reason on the archon this was the chink in the armor we needed since now the archon gives us a charge of untouchable so we are immune to a single attack and it pays off because once the archon is down their gatekeeper gets rapid fired and the rest is child's play since the big golf ball is a smoldering wreck and the vipers are a cakewalk now so with all that done we are now into the final segment of the game we see the avatar and it's time to throw down and show these xenos how awesome red is is let's go now we're in the final part of the game we see the first avatar and it's all about creating play so the archon gets injured allowing us to get a charge of untouchable as that is going to be key to surviving against the avatars since they have attacks that can auto hit us so we take a minor hit nothing serious but the first archon is down so when it's turn two we use reaper to destroy the remaining archon and overwatch right next to the avatar to get two hits off even if we miss our stock will still do damage but we get lots of enemies that bladestorm can take things out with so things are looking great for us the avatar as predicted uses his auto hit attack but untouchable makes it so he can't hit us wasting his move and next turn we don't do much but end our turn next to the avatar and once again we do a little more damage than we normally would since he dodged the attack and our sword prox at least is something however he is now in lethal range so i do the same thing but our overwatch prox on an avatar arriving through one of the gates 
shredding their armor and we have bladestorm take out the first avatar so it's starting to get interesting the second avatar teleports within our range and rapid fire has come off cooldown so the enemy have their turn and afterwards we decide to shove a shotgun in the avatar's face nothing really survives this and the avatar is no exception courtesy from red he's called red for a reason folks so for the final avatar we simply just walk up to them and attack them but lots of enemies are coming in and two heavy mechs in particular do a lot of damage to us so much so we are battered down to our last couple of bits of hp however when our turn rolls around we see the last avatar as he's teleported away on top of a psionic gate so we go over there we make zoro proud we stab him and he's now dead ending the run answering the question can you beat xcom 2 with a single ranger and the answer is yes yes you can and i'm so sorry i said bladestorm a lot of time but here we are it's done ladies and gentlemen okay if you guys have made it all the way to the end of the video for this one especially crikey you are truly amazing and i can't give you enough props so well done and this was one of the longer challenges simply because taking out the assassin first is quite a task and if not equipped to do so it takes a lot of attempts but when we got the chosen sword that was the point where this run could be beaten reliably and not focused on covert ops or stalling tactics but for us, I will say this is the first time I've beaten the campaign, first time, no retries, didn't have to redo it, and that just goes to show, yeah, Rangers are pretty damn awesome, and not worrying about melee is really, really nice. So with that done, I think, yeah, if I was to put the Rangers in a tier placement, well, they would be up there with the sharpshooter, so... That video will be coming once I've done every single class, so there you go. Anyway, I think the next challenge for the next week will be going back to Fallout and trying to beat Fallout 4 with all enemies being legendary. I kind of want to do a difficult and challenging run for a while and not limit myself to certain weapons. So we'll see how that goes once again. It's just going to be a blast. So yeah, but thank you everybody for watching. If you've made it this far in the video, well, I tip my hat off to you. I'm exhausted. It's been a long one but um you guys make this worth doing you guys are absolutely amazing and you are just a superstar if you got to this point so with that i think it's time to close out and yeah i've been insane frame thank you very much for watching you have been an absolute trooper and amazing thank you for watching like comment all that stuff you know what to do you watch enough youtube videos or if this is your first one just thank you for being here and watching because that means the world and that is why you guys are fantastic so with all of that said you guys are fantastic you are amazing thank you from the bottom of my heart you are brilliant please 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 look after yourselves stay safe have an amazing time you are all phenomenal and with that thank you just thank you for watching thank you for being here i've been insane frame thank you very much i'll see you in the next one and this is insane frame Signing off. Take care of yourselves and have a good night. Bye for now.